Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This one tackles an old exam question about giving counterexamples for claims formulated in predicate logic. More specifically, this is a claim about numbers. It says that all numbers divisible by 3 must also have a number that divides it that is larger than 3 and unequal to n, or all numbers larger than 3 must not divide it. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a counterexample to this claim. Now this claim is an implication, which means the third part, first part, 3 divides n, needs to be true. It also means that the entire second part must be false. In this case, that means that the existential part and the for all part must both be false. So how does that work? Well, if 3 divides n must be true, let's see what options we've got. We can take 0, or 3, or 6, or 9, any multiple of 3. How about that last part? If a for all needs to be false, that means that there must be a number, in this case a number that's larger than 3, that divides n. Remember, we're again making an implication false here. So there must be some number for which x is larger than 3 and x does divide n. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that we need a divisor larger than 3. So when we consider our options for n in a moment, we should keep in mind that there needs to be at least one divisor larger than 3. Now what about this there exists an m thing? If that needs to be false, then it must mean that all m must have certain properties. In this case, all m either shouldn't be a divisor, they should be smaller than or equal to 3, or they should be equal to n. In other words, if we want to read this as an implication, it says that all divisors of n must either be smaller than 3 or equal to n. But hang on. We also need a divisor larger than 3. That's what the blue part said. So how are we going to fix that? Well, only x equals n is going to do if we take an n larger than 3. So what do we need? Well, we need an n that's larger than 3, so that we have a divisor larger than 3, namely itself. And we need to make sure that all other divisors are smaller than or equal to 3. So if we take a look at, for instance, the number 6, well, 6 has as its divisors 1, 2, 3, and 6. So yeah, that will do. 9, divisors 1, 3, and 9 will also do. 12, however, won't do. Because 12 has as its divisors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And 4 and 6 are not allowed. Because they are not divisors smaller than 3 or equal to n. What about n equals 0 or n equals 3? Well, there's a problem with them as well, and the problem is in the blue part. Because the numbers do need a divisor strictly larger than 3. And while 0 has many, many divisors, so it also has divisors larger than 3 unequal to n, which isn't allowed by the red part, and n equals 3 has only two divisors, 1 and 3, so it doesn't have a divisor larger than 3, which the blue part says that it needs. So 6 and 9 are the only right answers to this question. You can pick either one and verify that indeed, for instance for 6, 3 divides 6, but all divisors of 6 are smaller than or equal to 3, or equal to 6, and yes, there is a divisor larger than 3, namely 6. So, that's how I would tackle this old exam question. Hopefully you can now do the same in the future. And that's it for this pencast. See you around for the next one.